Okay, let's get started by right? taking out the white paper, guys. Now let's get started with the class. Good, good, good. Let's start with the videos. And there's more people would be joining in. Okay, share the screen. Share the screen. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about Guru Tech Bob Duty today. Happy Mother's Day, Peloton! Welcome to this video where we'll be sharing 9 facts about the 9th Guru that you probably did not know. And make sure you stay to the end of this video because the 9th fact is probably the coolest and the craziest of them all. Fact number 1. When Sri Guru Tegh Bahadji took Prakash in Guru Ki Mehal, which is in Amritsar Sahib, the news spread all around and it came to Sri Akal Takh Sahib, which is where Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji was, the sixth Guru, and who was also their father. So Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji, hearing the news, was so happy that they came to see their son. And what was the first thing that they did when they saw Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji? They actually bowed in their feet. Really cool, right? A father actually bowing to their own son. And when the other Guru Sikhs saw this, Bhai Bidhi at that time said that you have five sons in total now, but you only bow to the fifth one. What is the reason for this? And that's when Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji says that this fifth son of mine is going to be the Guru in the future. Fact number two, when it came to naming our ninth Guru, what happened one day was that the servant had taken the ninth Guru to go and see their father, Siddhi Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji. And what she did was that she placed the ninth Guru in the feet of Siddhi Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji. And when she lifted it back up, our sixth Guru, Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji, always carried two swords. And the ninth Guru, just being a young baby, held on to both of the handles of those swords. And the servant seeing this, she tried to pull the ninth Guru away, but she didn't have enough strength for her. And Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji, the father seeing this, started to smile. And they said that my child is giving us a sign to what their name should be. That they were, they're going to be Tegdi Bahadri. They're going to be very brave with the swords. And at that time, the sixth Guru, Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji, named the ninth Guru Teg Bahadur Ji. Fact number three, our ninth Guru was known to renounce the whole world. Always absorbed in meditation, in serving other people and not thinking about themselves. I want story to illustrate this was when their eldest brother, Baba Gurudetta Ji, was going to get married. The mother of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji dressed most so beautifully for that wedding. Jewelry, nice clothes, you name it. And at that time when the wedding was taking place, a poor person came along and when Guru Sahib Ji saw them, they felt so much compassion for them that they gave their own clothes and their jewelry to that person. And this is showing us how Guru Sahib Ji did not care for what others thought about them. And in their own words, they say, Ustit Nindya Nahe Jihe Kanchan Loho Saman Koho Nanak Sunare Mana Mukta Tahe Te Jan. That that one who is above slander and praiser, who sees gold and iron as the same, that person is truly liberated. Fact number four as well as showing us the spiritual side, our ninth Guru also showed us the warrior side as well. So, fighting alongside their father, Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji and their two brothers, Baba Gurditta Ji and Baba Suraj Mal Ji, they fought in the Battle of Siri Kartarpur Sahib against 100,000 Mughal soldiers. What's really interesting is that they're the youngest of the five sons. And the family has said to him that you don't need to fight in this battle. But they were persistent that they were going to fight in that battle. And they fought so ferociously where also they lived up to their name, Tegh Bahadur. Fact number five, Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji saved a ship from sinking. So when somebody named by Makkan Shah Labana was at sea with his soldiers, with his workers, there was like this small little island or some rocks which his ship got stuck on. And they couldn't move it. They even got off the ship and tried to push it, but nothing worked. One day passed, two days passed, and now a month had passed, and they'd eaten all their rations that they had on the ship. Since everything had failed, the only thing by Makkan Shah could do now was a humble plea to the Guru. So with all his men, they washed their hands, they washed their feet, and they did this ardas together. And in the ardas, they said to the Guru that all these items that I'm trading right now, whatever money I make for them, I will donate 500 gold coins to you. And after doing this humble plea, a loud sound was heard, and that ship was catapulted back into the sea. 
So by Makkan Shah was saved. And later on, when they reached Bagale Pind, which is where the ninth Guru was, they actually offered those 500 coins to the Guru. And Guru Tegh Bahadurji at that time showed their shoulder, the shoulder that they used to save by Makkan Shah and push that ship back into the ocean. Fact number six, assassination attempt on the Guru. So when Bhai Makkan Shah had come to find the Guru at that time and gave those 500 coins, in that village, there was 22 other people claiming to be the Guru at the same time. So everyone was very confused. But there was one person in particular known as Tirmal, who is related to Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. And he was seen as the most obvious choice because he was a brother of the seventh Guru, but he also had Sidi Guru Granth Sahib Ji with him as well. And his men had said to him, that Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji is the biggest threat to you. So what you should do is that you should kill them and steal all their wealth. So one of the men of Tirmal actually went to the home of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji and they fired a bullet at Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. And they say that bullet just skimmed the forehead of the ninth Guru and blood actually came out of the matha, the forehead of Sidi Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. Even with all this happening, Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji didn't even care about it. But when Bhai Makkan Shah found out about this, he took his soldiers and went to go and punish those people who had done this to the ninth Guru and brought back all that wealth as well. Fact number seven, Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji was refused entry to Sidi Harimandar Sahib. When they were traveling with Bhai Makkan Shah to Kadur Sahib, to Gondor Sahib, they decided that now they'll come to Sidi Harimandar Sahib. But when they arrived, the four doors were locked and the Darshan Diori door was locked as well. And who was doing this? It was the Masans. The reason why they were doing this for is because they were so greedy for all their wealth and they thought if the Guru was to come, they're going to take all their wealth away from us. So what did the ninth Guru do? They actually went and did a shanan. They bathed in the Amrita Sarovar and they went and sat underneath a tree. And that tree today you can find, which is now a Godara Sahib, known as Godara Tara Sahib, where Guru Sahib stayed and later when they moved on to a Guru Sikh's home. So as we said earlier, they had darshan many times of Sidi Harimandara Sahib, but later on in their life, they refused entry. Fact number eight, when the ninth Guru was traveling across East India, saving many people and connecting them to the truth, there was one family who fell in love with Guru Sahib so much that the mother of that home could not bear to live without seeing Guru Tegh Bahad Ji every single day. And when Guru Sahib Ji heard this, they said, bring a painter here and tell them to paint a picture of me. And whenever you look at that picture, just like how you see me in this physical form, you'd have that same experience through the picture. An artist then arrived to paint the ninth Guru, painting the room, painting the beautiful clothes that the Guru was wearing. But when it came to actually painting the face, they really struggled. The Guru's face was glowing so much and they couldn't paint that. So when the ninth Guru could sense this struggle, Guru Tegh Bahadji themselves painted their own face and finished off that painting and then placed it on the bed that they always sit on and today, you can have darshan of that same sarup as well. Fact number nine, the ninth Guru actually gave their own life so the Hindus could continue to practice their own faith in freedom. So during that time, the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb was forcibly converting all the Hindus to his own faith. Thousands of people were converted every single day, but it was taking too long. So what they thought to themselves was that instead of converting the people, let's just convert their leaders and they'll be much quicker. When the Hindu leaders heard about this, they didn't know what to do. So they said to the Mughals that give us six months to think about this. In those six months, they meditated for countless hours until they realized that the only one who could help them was the ninth Guru of the Sikhs, Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. So they came to the ninth Guru and they said to them, Baha Asadi Pakriya Guru Har Gobind Ke Chand. They said, will you hold on to our arm? Will you protect us? The son of the sixth Guru, Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji. When Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji heard this, they said to them that whoever's arm I hold on to, I will never let go of it. Even if I have to give my own head, I will never let go of your arm. Having said this, the ninth Guru issued a challenge to the Mughal leaders, saying, if you convert me, then you could convert all of the Hindus. But if you fail, then nobody's going to get converted. So in 1675, despite all the efforts the Mughals made, they were able to convert the ninth Guru. And this led them to have no other choice but to execute the ninth Guru. So in Chandani Chok, Delhi, Sidi Guru Tegh Bahadji was beheaded, but they lived up to the words that they said to the Hindus, where they would give their head, but never let go of their arms, and none of the Hindus were converted after this. So we come to the end of this video now. 
nine facts about the ninth guru that you probably did not know. If there was something that you learned new here, then make sure you let us know in the comments section. If there's something we missed out and you think that was an interesting fact as well, then please share that with us. Make sure you guys share this video, like this video, and subscribe to this channel as well. So please forgive all the mistakes that have been made. Vahe Guruji ka khalsa, Vahe Guruji ki fateh. Dispense. Supplements virtually on one platform. Ghosts, evil spirits, black magic. Many people ask, do these things actually exist? Watch this video and find out. <laughs> <laughs> Ghosts, evil spirits, black magic, all these different things that many people are afraid of. And they'll even ask this question, what does Siki have to say about it? Do these things actually exist? Well, interestingly enough, all of our gurus face the supernatural. Our one example for you guys is of our ninth guru, Guru Teg Bahadur Ji, who is put into a haunted mansion. That's why a haunted mansion. And the reason for this was because Guru Sahib was doing something so big that they were going to give their life for righteousness, for a different faith, for the Hindu faith. And they thought that let's convert Guru Teg Bahadur Ji to Islam by putting them in this scary mansion. They'll get so afraid and they accept this religion or they will die from the ghosts. So you can imagine the whole day has passed and it's getting dark. And you know, scary mansion, when it gets dark, things are not going to end well. <laughs> and that's exactly what happens that when it gets dark, this evil spirit comes out, this demon, this ghost, and it's going to confront the Guru. And when it puts its hands together and it comes towards the Guru, what does it do? It actually bows in the Guru's feet. Why? We didn't think that was going to happen. And it's come to serve Guru Teg Bahadur Ji. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just pause for one second. So you're telling me that all these things exist that I'm scared of. But one question for you then is how does somebody become one of them? That's a really good question. You ask a lot of good questions. And Guru Bani answers this question for us. And they say, If at the end of your life, you remember your possessions, you remember your home, and somebody passes away in this worry, fixated on those items, that property. Preet John, Val Val Autre. Preet John, Preet him means ghost, demon, evil spirit. John, like we say June, Charasilak, June, these different life forms. They say that person comes back in that form many, many times. And this evil spirit actually, in their previous life, lived that kind of life where they were fixated on their property. And what are they now? They are a ghost. So back to the main point, they now come to serve Guru Teg Bahadur Ji and they give them fruit. And amongst that fruit is a sugar cane as well. Guru Teg Bahadji eats that sugar cane, but they leave a little bit for that spirit. And that spirit takes that sugar cane and eats it themselves. And by eating that, all of their pop, all their sin has been washed away and they actually gain mukti. They actually get liberated from eating that sugar cane from Guru Teg Bahadur Ji. So let's get a bit more serious now. Vaiguru Ji's creation is very vast. 
Agurbani says to us, Kay Kota, Uta, Preta, Sukar, Mrigaj, which means that there's many different types of spirits, ghosts. Uh, Sukar here means uh, pigs, and Mrigaj means shed. And somebody might even say that this is just an analogy. Um, we don't have to take it seriously. But we know that there are many types of pigs and many types of lions. And in the same context, in the same sentence, they're mentioning uh, different types of spirits as well. And this is the key point. Because we don't understand certain things, we start to get afraid and we have fear of the unknown. But Gurbani says to us, Nirapao Jape, meaning if you remember the one who is fearless, Sagalapao Mite, then all of our fear is taken away as well. And just like Guru Teg Bahadurji, our Guru, none of these evil spirits could affect them. And that one who reads the Guru's Bani as well, the Guru's words, they cannot be affected by these spirits as well. So many times people do say to us that they have these issues in their home of black magic, of, of evil spirits, or maybe ghosts, and even just negative energy. Two tips to help you guys in these situations is one, always seek the Guru's sanctuary. Sit amongst those people who are singing the Guru's praises and will be protected. And the second thing, is always read the Guru's words or listen to the Guru's words. One prayer that you guys can listen to is Chaupai Sahib, a prayer for protection. So that's the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure you like the video, make sure you guys share the video, subscribe if you haven't already and click that little bell button as well. If there's anything you want us to cover going forward, then leave us a message in the comment section and we'll read your comment. And if enough people like that comment, they will make that video as well. So please forgive all the mistakes that we made. Vahi Guru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vahi Guru Ji Ki Fateh. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share. Duke's freshly crafted smoked meats. Meet us in the snack aisle. The first K is the cutter, which is a steel bangle. Notice how it's a perfect circle? This symbolizes the way in which divine energy has no beginning and no end. We wear this on the wrist and it reminds us to keep truth, strength and integrity. It emphasizes the Sikh motto of no fear and no hate. Sikhs have a duty to defend the weak, to stand for justice and human rights. So we have the second K, which is the Kirpan. This is a ceremonial sword. It signifies our commitment to justice and is a symbol of religious freedom. The third K is the Kashera, which is a pair of underpants. Underpants with religious significance. The Kashera were originally worn by Sikh soldiers and they represent self-restraint, chastity, and purity. The fourth K is all about hair. Throughout history, hair has been regarded as a symbol of strength and holiness. Sikhs think of their hair as a blessing and they practice kesh, which means not cutting their hair. A Sikh's kesh is always covered, which is why you see so many Sikh men and women wearing turbans. This is a religious requirement for Sikhs and it's like a uniform. It means we can always be recognized and stand out to help others in need. The longer your hair is, the more important it is to keep it clean. So we use the fifth K, the Kanga, which is a wooden comb. It's used to detangle the hair, keep it neat, but also reminds us to generally practice good hygiene and keep a tidy appearance. The word Sikh means disciple or student. A Sikh is someone who is learning and on a journey. People can be at different stages of their journey. Not all Sikhs will have every one of these five Ks as part of their external identity.
The important thing for every Sikh to remember is to invest in their spiritual development, to practice compassion towards everyone, everywhere, at all times. Waikuji ka khalsa, waikuji ki fateh. Sikh, which is pronounced Sikh in Punjabi, is a word which means a learner or a disciple. In that sense, we're all Sikh. And the word Sikhism was coined around 1900 by Westerners. Point number two, around 75% of the world's 24 million or so Sikhs live in one state of India, the Indian state of Punjab in the northwest. Point number three, the Sikh scripture is the Guru Granth Sahib. It's a volume of mystical verse by six of the Sikh's ten gurus and other mystical poets. Number four, the Sikh's ten human gurus lived during a period that roughly corresponds to the period of Mughal rule in North India. It started with Guru Nanak, a more or less contemporary of Martin Luther in the West. He was born in 1469. And the line of 10 human gurus finished with the death of Guru Gobind Singh, the 10th guru in 1708. Point number five, signifiers of being a Sikh. There are five which begin with the letter K in the Punjabi al alphabet. So the Kara, which is a wristband or, or bangle, and the, the Kangra, which is a wooden comb which is worn in the hair, the uncut hair, kish, is one of them. The kirpan, which is a sword, often a very short sword, often worn underneath clothing. Um, and the kach or the kachahira, which are the, the breeches, usually worn as a form of underwear, but shorts, uh, which finish above the knee. Those are the five indicators that somebody is an initiated Sikh, initiated into the Khalsa community. Uh, but the turban is the respectful way of covering the uncut hair. Number six, key Sikh teachings include living a life which is focused on the guru and focused on God rather than on the individual's whims and individual greed and so on. And the Sikh life is to be one that is a, a fine balance between service voluntarily serving the community and also taking family responsibilities and contemplation, being mindful of the divine in everything one does. Point number seven, the Sikh's place of worship is called a Gurdwara. It's called a Gurdwara because it's where the Guru resides and the Guru, the Guru Granth Sahib, the scripture, is central to everything that happens in the Gurdwara. People pay their respects Every life cycle, rite and festival involves reading from the Guru Granth Sahib. And the Guru Granth Sahib is enthroned on cushions under a canopy and people behave in a particularly respectful way in the presence of the scriptures. Point number eight, Amritsar in Punjab 
is Sikh's spiritual centre. It's the place where the Golden Temple is, which is also known as Darbar Sahib and Harmandar Sahib. And it is visited by hundreds of thousands of people. So each day, about 100,000 people receive free hospitality, cooked food in the Langar, in the food hall of the Golden Temple in Amritsar. Number nine, the British, during the British Raj, regarded Sikhs as a martial race and favoured them in recruitment for the British Indian Army. And during the two world wars, over 80,000 Sikh soldiers lost their lives and over 109,000 were injured. Point number 10, the Gurus emphasised the irrelevance of gender, whether you were born male or female, and caste, which hereditary employment group you were born into. Totally irrelevant for spiritual progress. And so Sikhs have a belief in equality of all people. If you're looking to strengthen the relationship between you and your animal without using dominating approaches, why great Kalsa, why great Kate? But now I'm Rupinder Karakalsa. Uh, I am a Sikh since five years. Um, I have been working with Sikh Dharma since that time. Here in Chile, Sikh Dharma is a very new religion. We have been going through a very difficult process of legalization because here in Chile is not very famous spiritual path. So we have been working on that like for four years and finally three days ago we realized that now is legalized Sikh Dharma as a religion and this is a very good news for all of us because we are around 100 Sikhs in Chile working and running Gurdwaras, running ceremonies and Ankaraj and everything since 20 years ago. So now we will be protected and with more safety in our jobs in the health system and political system so it's a very good news for all of us we have like two cases of six that who were discriminated in their jobs this past year so because of their turbans and their banners and beard and everything so this legalization is going to protect them okay. against discrimination and we can have the right to to have weapons in public places also we started the legalization process four years ago creating a legal document that describes what a turban is what Sikh Dharma is who we are what do we want to legalize Sikh Dharma Chile and then all the legal process was about waiting for the government to approve this kind of stuff and our values also as a Sikh in Chile. And I mean, we decide to do this legal process because we are thinking about all our children and our generations in the future, not for us, because we need to create a legacy in the future for the world. So that was our purpose. What does it mean to you who are involved? Like it's, you guys are gonna have a party or something? Or? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Maybe an Akampat or something like that, because this is a very big step for Chile. I mean, we have in Chile around 200 spiritual paths, I mean, legalized here in Chile. 
and Sikh Dharma was not legalized. So this is a very big and important step for us. We're going to do a celebration with a Gurdwara program. Let's see. Why Gritika Kalsa, why Gritiki Pate? My name is Scott Harrison. <laughs> Just listen. This is my wife, my son, and my one on the Since we still have time, I will play one more video. Short one, then we'll call it a day. Ten more minutes. So a little short one. I'm going to play this one, it's a very short one. Okay, let's talk about this one. Hindustan to maa bole, baa bole, kya bole? Hindustan to Hindustan hai. Bum foot hai. Hum bhi wahi te kampal ke niche hai, hum chupay te. Unki soj kya hai, kya hai, hum musulman hai, hum musulman hai, chhe loog hai. From low cover. Eleven members of the minority community in Afghanistan arrived in India on Sunday. The Afghanis, mostly Sikhs, were greeted with garlands and shawls. They were recently granted short-term visas by the Indian government. The travellers include Nidan Singh, who was abducted by Taliban on June 22nd from a Gurudwara. Nidan Singh was later released with the Afghan government's help. Religious minorities in Afghanistan have regularly faced harassment. Now, the resurgence of Taliban is causing increased nervosity among minorities. On March 25th this year, a terror attack at a Gurudwara in Kabul had killed over 25 people. India has offered minorities from Afghanistan citizenship under the new Citizenship Amendment Act. The CAA gives citizenship to six minorities from three countries who came to India before 2015. Mr. सब खराब नहीं है 
अफगानिस्तान में जो सब खराब हो नहीं अच्छे लोग भी हैं बुरे लोग भी हैं जो बुरे तैदात है उसकी ज़्यादा है अस्सी फीसदों जो अच्छी तैदात है वो बीस फीसदों में बैठे हुए हैं वही बीस फीसदों के लोग जो हैं उनका दर्द हमारे दिल में है उनकी दर्द हमारे दिल में उनके दर्द ऐसे हम सोचते हैं तो लेकिन हमारी सोच में कुछ नहीं आता जो भी होगा वो देखा जाएगा क्या करते हैं अभी तो हम यहाँ पर आए हैं हम कुछ कह नहीं सकते आपको कि ज़्यादा आपसे बात करें दबाव जो है वो कहते हैं हमारा धर्म जो है अच्छा है और धर्म सब बुरे हैं हम कहते हैं नहीं सब धर्म अच्छे हैं हमारी सोच ये है उनकी सोच क्या है कहते हैं हम मुसलमान हैं हम मुसलमान अच्छे लोग हैं तुम लोग काफर हो हमें काफर के नाम से बुलाया जाता है तो वो हमारी वैल्यू क्या रहेगी वहाँ पे जब एक बंदा उठे और एक सिख कौम को बोले पच्चीस साल तीस साल ज़िंदगी करो और आखिर क्या कहते हैं काफिर बोलते हैं हमें हमारा दिल बर्दाश्त करता है हमारी हमारी पेशानी में तो नहीं लिखा है हम काफ़िर हैं हम सिख हैं हमारी पगड़ी दस्तार देख के लोग हमें काम करते हैं ऐसी बात नहीं है आज हम बड़ी मुश्किलातों से निकल के आए हैं तो हम खुश हैं अपना हिंदुस्तान में पहुंचे हैं मेरे चाचा हैं ऐसे मुश्किलातें बहुत हैं तो आगे देखें क्या होता है हमारे जो बंदे फंसे हुए हैं हम यही कहते हैं कि उन्हें भी आ जाए चार बंदे ने आके सबको मार के गए सब मार के सारे गए चार बंदे थे आतंकवादी बम हाँ बम फूटे मरमियाँ लगे हम भी वहीं थे कंपल के नीचे हम छुपे थे और हमारे पीछे इधर इधर देखा मुझे इधर इधर देखा और मार न ढूंढा फिर वापस चला गया ओके क्लास ना ओके आगे दिखाता है ओके विकाय